Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining me here in the Simply Too Good Headquarters kitchen. It's recipe time, I've got my apron on and welcome to the show. I'm Annette Sim and I'm excited to cook to you, for you today a recipe that I created many, many years ago. Yes, we're going desserts today and I'm talking super guilt-free. We're going into book one, which is the very first book. That's how long ago this recipe was created and we're making wine trifle. Oh my gosh. It, I mean, I'm amazed that some people don't have not had it before, whereas to me, my kids were raised on it. We loved wine trifle. But the good news as well, let me just put that over there, is it's also, because that serves eight, okay? But I've also done it in the cooking for one or two. For those of you who don't want a big uh, trifle, you can do individual, that's right. Two serves, one each in a glass bowl. How perfect is that? And that's really good for those that are trying to be um, strict on their program or whatever. So that's great. Now, last week's show, before we get into all the fizzy of the fabulous of Wayne Trevor, we're going to talk about the winners because they're a bit excited. June Greer was a winner. Janet Solsony, well done. And Marie Frost. They have all won a Pootsie signed copy of a book. And of course, you know I love to give away, so stay tuned for that. So, what do we need to make a wine trifle? It is the easiest dessert, truly. It's sort of layer upon layer of fabulousness. So what we're gonna start with is the custard. And so we want two cups of skim milk. I want two tablespoons of custard powder and one tablespoon of white sugar. We're also going to put in half a teaspoon of vanilla essence. So that's the custard. Then we need the fruit. And so today in the recipe, it's the peaches. We want 800 grams of peaches in natural juice. And so we will do that. Then we make um, the jelly and we need a sachet. And I always use the jelly light because I'm looking at cutting the calories down and the sugar. And so I'm using strawberry in this recipe because I like it the way it balances off with the the jam in the rolls. Um, in the rolls, we've got the six mini jam sponge rolls and I've got my plonk here and I stole some Galway pipe from Billy. I know, it's a fabulous port. Let's make this trifle amazing. And I've got 60 mils of port, but you could also do sherry if you wished. So what I'm gonna do first is make the custard. Alrighty, so let's get my pan or my pot. What we do is put in the milk. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually, if you wanted even creamier custard, you can actually do uh, trim milk, you know, the 2%. It just puts the fat count up a bit higher, but don't worry, it's okay. You know, it's up to you. Now, what we're going to do is put in a tablespoon of white sugar. Let me get my trusty little 15 ml spoon. Okay, so we want a tablespoon of sugar. We want half a teaspoon of vanilla. Hello, if you've just joined me, we're making a guilt-free dessert today. That's right, it's a wine trifle out of cooking for one or two, as well as the book one. All right, so we want half a teaspoon. Let me move my spoon down. Half a teaspoon of vanilla essence. In we go, fabulous. Then our custard powder, of course. We need custard powder. And I'll show you a different way later. I'll talk about variations with this if you want to make it even easier. So we're doing two tablespoons. I like to push it in so I get it really flat and firm um, because you want to make sure you get enough of the custard powder. Let's move that out of the way. You're done. Then I'm going to get my whisk. And notice I haven't turned the heat on yet. I want to get this all ready before I do that. So then I'm mixing it together until it's all dissolved. Looking good. Now I'm going to put my heat on and I'm not going to make it really hot. I'm going to go up to about three quarters of the way. And this is where you have to stand. I'm sorry you can't go anywhere right now. It's all about the custard and you will need to be a stirrer. That's right. We don't want to walk away from the custard right now. We want to keep stirring until it boils. Now the key is why I didn't put this up to a really high temperature is because with the milk and the sugar in it, it can burn on the base. 
So don't have it full pelt. We want it on a slower heat and just take your time with it and it will be fabulous. Now because I need cold custard and I need set jelly, I've already preempted the whole thing and I've got them ready to go so you will see the whole trifle completed on the show. So I get two trifles in my house today. We're very excited. Oh, I've got friends, um, I'm going to friends for dinner on Saturday night and I've already said to them, would you like a trifle? Uh, guess what they said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is one trifle, book one. It serves eight. Now, the thing is, you can make it for two if you want, as I said earlier. So this is where you get the great options in that cooking for one or two. Now, if this was an English trifle, because we're going to England today, this is where trifle was invented. Thank you, England, favorite dessert. So in England, you'd probably put full fat milk in the custard. You'd also put a lot of cream in it. And this is where we don't go there, people. No, we're talking heart attack in a spoon. So instead of it being at least 25 grams of fat a serve, yes, get ready, 1.6 grams of fat per serve done my way. That's right, guilt free and it's not a high calorie dessert either. And, um, and as I go along I'm going to talk about the different variations you can do. So if you're going, Annette, I can't be bothered making custard, I mean really it's not hard, okay. But if you really are in a hurry, then you buy the low fat um, Paul's custard. You need 600 mils and you've got that. This is looking like it's nearly ready. Now I've got my bowl here ready to put the custard in because it's going to have to go in the fridge. <clears throat> now once it's boiled, pour it in and I'm going to show you a little trick you might not be aware of. Because we used to have custard all the time as kids. Banana custard with nutmeg. Oh, I loved it when I was a kid. But you know what ha would happen? We, Mum would make the custard and, and people would fight over the skin that comes on the custard. Not me. <laughs> Did you like the skin, Bill? No. No, no. But people do. So I wonder, if you're an oldie like me, did you like to eat the skin off the custard? I want to know in the comments because are you a skin on or skin off? Woohoo! <laughs> Look what's happening. So it's boiled. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, in the olden days, custard was a really big deal because we didn't have all the options back in the day. So, did you like the skin of the custard? I'm going to put this in my soapy sink. It can be soaking. I'm going to get rid of my cooktop. Put that over here. Now, let me show you what you do with the custard, all right? So, you get some cling wrap. So, normally you'd either put that in the fridge like that or you'd put cling wrap on the top. No, let me show you a different way. And I tell you in the recipe, so if you've got the book, you will be told this, but what you're going to do is you're going to put the cling wrap, zoom in on it, Billy, on top of the custard itself. All right? I'm going to put a little bit more cling here. So what happens is you're touching the custard with the cling wrap. And that means when it's set, and I'll show you in a minute, there's no skin on the top. I know. So that is your tip for today. All right, so that, thank you, Billy, will go in the fridge. Now, what we're going to do is the jelly. All right, so let me boil my kettle. I did boil it just before we started, so it should be good. Now, you just get a sachet of the light jelly. Now, I do say strawberry in the recipe, as I said, because I like the colour match with the jam. But you could do any colour you like. Really, it doesn't matter. So I've put the sachet in. Remember, it's the light. And we're going to do a cup. And I've got a cup of cold water in the fridge. And Bill's going to get it out for me in a minute once I've done this. Because this is a really quick way to dissolve the jelly and it sets quicker. So what you do is I'm going to get my whisk and just pour the hot in, that's right. Now you need to make sure all of it dissolves, okay? So, 
And this is where we've saved a few calories as well because the normal jelly is just full of sugar. And you could do any colour you like. So if you've got green or orange or purple, I don't care. You can choose. So I've mixed this up. This looks like it's good, but I'll tell you how to make sure. Get a dessert spoon and look at it. And if it's all clear and you can't see little sugar bits, then you know it's done. It's dissolved. So what you do now, Bill, can I have the cup of cold water? This is a really good idea to quicken the, the time it takes to do the jelly. So I've got a cup of cold water. In we go. Because in England, they often would just pour the jelly over the cake because they do a sponge and it would soak into the cake. I don't particularly like it like that way. I want the jelly. Billy, in the fridge, thank you very much. So we've done the custard, we've done the jelly. Put in the fridge and really, to be honest, when the jelly is set, your custard would be set at the same time. All right, so now we're going to drain the peaches. So, like you can see, it's not hard to do. It's just layer upon layer of fabulous. So, oh yes, in the cooking book too, it says raspberry jelly because I like to be different. You can do raspberry or strawberry. It really is, they're both lovely and red and that's what matters. All right, so 800 grams of peaches. Now I've got my draining thing here. It's better not to buy the syrup because that's really sweet. And so we're gonna drain that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna cut up the peaches, all right? Because we don't want big, like there's a really big piece of peach there. We don't want that. So what you do is you just go through, because I wanna spread the love of the fruit. And I'll tell you later how, you know, if you don't want, say, I don't like peaches. Well, you know what, I'll tell you in a minute what you can swap it for. I just find peaches are around all year. Um, sometimes I've done strawberries and mixed berries, but then that can get expensive. So if you're looking for a cheap, this is not an expensive dessert, then peaches are good. All right, so we're gonna move that to the side. And now we're gonna do the cake. All right, so now, see, the thing is, a lot of people, they make sponges to go on the bottom of the trifles. Oh, I'm sorry, no. It's called easy peasy. Thank you very much. So we have six rolls here. And all we have to do is cut them into slices. Now, I've got my port there. Here's my trifle bowl, a bit fabulous. And we've got the six jam sponges. And I'm going to use my red knife for this. And what you're going to do is cut them into thin slices, okay? See what I'm doing? And look what you get. You get the beautiful round shape of the jam. You could use plain sponge pieces if you want. I tell you in the recipe that the sponge is 180 grams. So that's just to let you know if you wanted to make your own sponge or you know plain sponge, whatever, it's 180 grams. And you don't want them too thick. You want to be able to spread it all around the bowl and make it look a bit amazing. And if you're like, and, and what you do then is you pour the port over. Now, if you're saying, oh, I don't want the kids to eat it, how can I do that? Well, I've done it where I did half with alcohol and half with just orange juice. So the adults didn't miss out. Or if you really don't want the alcohol, do the whole thing, the 60 mils. Instead, you could do orange juice. So you, you're fine with that. You could use frozen fruits, but I would defrost them before you put them into the, um, into the dish. So that was a good question, thank you. And you'll find some frozen fruit, like berries, can be a bit bitter. Um, so just be aware of that. You could do any canned fruit you like. You know, you could do apricots. They'd be nice. Um, and if you've got mangoes, go on fresh mangoes and you think, well, I might you could do mangoes. But what it is, let me just tell you so you know. Let's check the variation. It says here, I wrote this of course, 
For an even simpler version, replace the custard mix with 600 ml of carton of low-fat custard. I've told you that, you're good to go. Or replace the tinned peaches with your choice of fruit, whatever fruit you like, but it's got to equal two and a half cups of fruit, okay? Because that's what that will be if we measured the peaches. Or for an alcohol-free option, as I said, replace the port and cherry with orange juice. There we go. So now we're going to do the cake. Thanks for joining me today. If you're just coming in, you're with, you've missed everything, Dal. I mean, you're just way too late. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to put all the little pieces of cake around. You could use the peach juice. Um, it's a little bit thicker than, um, than actual um, orange juice. So I'm not sure in a way because thinking about it, would it soak into the cake? Because that's what we want to do. But I like to put it around the edges and thinking about how it's going to look from the other side because let's make it fizzy fabulous people. Let, I mean, let's impress. But look at all the cake we've got here to use. So it'll go up the sides and that's what I love about it. It really does look very pretty when you, uh, you finish it up. And, uh, and I think, it, look, as you can see, it's not hard to make. I reckon the kids could even um, make it for a party or something like that if you've got anything going. And I'm sorry, but trifle, Christmas, yes, thank you. What a great dessert especially with our climate, because hello, we, I'm just gonna put another layer down in the base so it's really got it covered. But you know what, I don't know, my kids aren't big fans of Christmas pudding. This is what they love, yeah, because it's, it's good for the weather as well. So all I'm doing is just putting the cake that I cut all around and so what did we do? We did the custard and it's in the, the fridge. Now you wouldn't do this until your custard and jelly is set, okay? Because I'll show you what we do with the jelly because one of the things that can be really hard with making a trifle is waiting for the jelly to set. And then you're waiting and waiting and all of a sudden, you know, it's set. And it's hard, and what do you do? Because if, if you wanted to, um, I'm just filling gaps here, because that's as high as I want to go. All right, look at that. I know, it's fantastic. So this is where we make magic, here on Thursdays with Annette. That's right, we get the peaches, they're drained, and just pour it into the center. Yes, there we go. Now let me just wash my hands and Bill's going to get out the custard for me and the jelly please because we wanted it to stay in the fridge um, so it keeps setting. Alright, so here's your custard. Look, I just took that off. See how there's nothing, no skin on the top? And I'm going to just pour that custard now over the top. There we go. Uh, but you also know, hello, you can buy the pre-bought custard if you wish. So there's that. Now we do the jelly. Oh, I forgot to do the port. Oh, Annette, I was so excited. Oh, silly me. Bill's looking at me going, you forgot the port. Oh my gosh. So that is an alcohol-free one. <laughs> I can't take it out now. I can't go back. I'm so sorry, silly me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it around the edges. Oh, gosh, silly Annette. So what you do is you get your spoon and just touching all the sponge. Actually, this will, I'll just do it down the sides and it will seep down. It'll be very nice. It'll run down to the bottom. So that's fine. But I can't believe it. I mean, it's so simple to make and I've buggered it up. Honestly. What is wrong with you, Annette? So I'm just putting that all around the sides. There we go. 
it'll still be fabulous. So now what we do to finish this off is we get the jelly. Now see how it's set? And what you do is get a fork and you mash it up. That's right. That's it. And now what you do is get your spoon and just put little bits of the jelly. Let me move it over here. Little bits of the jelly. Don't just plonk that straight in, okay? Do what I'm doing because it would sink down with the custard. And just spread this over the top. And that is your trifle ready to enjoy. And don't do what I did. <laughs> Make sure you put the port in as you go. I was just a bit excited. I love this. I've made this that many times and that's the problem. See, when you make something a lot, you can be a bit blasé and not focus. But see how I'm just putting the jelly over the top. Now, if you wanted to have cream with this, I would suggest you use the Dairy Whip Light. You know, actually I'll get a scraper. I won't want that one. The Dairy Whip Light is in that thing where you shake it in the can and that you could, you know, as you serve it, you could put a little bit of uh, cream with that if you wanted because that's a much lighter way. All right, there is our trifle. I would say well done in it, but no. Now what you can do as well, which I often do, is I then actually push the cake down a little bit and there we go. So there's your trifle, book one. It serves eight, so tuck into that. It's fantastic. This will go in the fridge, let it just, you know, settle down a bit before you serve it. And you could make this days ahead. It wouldn't matter if you're having any functions in that. So now what we're going to do is we've got Thursday and Tuesday next week because you know Tuesday is home ec with Annette. And I'm excited because we're actually going on location. Yes, I won't be in the kitchen here next Tuesday. Where am I going to be? Well, you'll have to tune in on Tuesday to find out. But the recipe I'm making is out of book three. It's a fabulous one. It's Mexican dip. So it's in book three and cooking one or two. These are great recipes going into the festive season. So I want to support you. And um, on Thursday, I'll be back here with the apron on in, in my kitchen and it'll be chicken enchiladas. Book five, never buy another enchilada again. You can make it at home. It's fabulous. And I mean, when you look at this trifle, I mean, who knew weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? Do you want to win a book? Of course you do. You could win book one or cooking for one or two. You can choose. All you have to do is like, share, and then in the comments, you know what you've got to do. Come on, you've been doing it a while now. Hashtag simply with a Y, number two, good. Just write that in the comments, like, share, and you can go in the, the drawer to win a personally signed cookbook. Now, before I leave you, I need you to go and check my website out because today in the newsletter, we announced a little deal that's going with Neoflam. So if you would like to get the pots or the wok, we are now offering you the, the fry pans and the woks, the fry pan set and the wok, we're now offering half price on the glass lids. I know, it's so good to have a lid if you need it, and this way you can afford it. So check that out on my website, simplytogood.com.au. And here we go, the trifle done and dusted. Look at the cake, doesn't it look amazing? Thanks for joining me on Thursday, and I'll see you on location on Tuesday. Bye now. <laughs>